What's up, millennials? So today we're going to take a look at the valuation of Lordstown Motors. You probably already know this company if you clicked on this video, but this is a company that focuses on electric pickup trucks, and this was actually acquired by a SPAC that was trading under the ticker symbol DPHC, but the company uh, Lordstown Motors currently is trading under the ticker symbol RIDE, R-I-D-E. Now, before we start, if at any moment during this video you don't really know what I'm talking about, please check out my full SPAC guide. I'm going to talk about method number one in this video. The link to this SPAC guide is going to be found somewhere in the description beneath this video. And if you want to have access to the Excel sheet I'm going to be using today, you can join our Discord for free. You can just go to nesami.com slash Discord. Then you can leave your name, leave your email address. Then you can go to the channel SPACs, pinned messages, and then there you're going to find it. And of course, don't trust me, verify me. I'm just documenting my journey here on YouTube. I'm certainly not a financial advisor. So always check what I'm doing, check if everything is correct. Don't copy my numbers as is, just see what I do and then use your own multiples to come up with your own fair valuation, fair price per share. As a brief introduction of this company, Lordstown Motors, we can see that this company is focusing on light duty trucks. So basically pickup trucks. And they say that they have $1.4 billion in pre-orders. But keep in mind, there has been a short seller report uh, published by Hindenburg Research, which of course is a very notorious short seller. And they say that these orders might actually be fake. So definitely keep that in mind when you do your research into this company. But again, in this video, we're just going to be taking a look at the valuation of this company. And the company Lordstown Motors also say they're going to potentially get into SUVs as well. For the valuation of this company, we can check out a few things. First of all, we're going to go into trading view where we can see that the current price per share is $13.49. So that is the price that you can plug over here in your Excel sheet. And then we're going to go to the uh, earnings, of course, from Lordstown Motors. They just published their earnings, I believe, last week, so a few days ago. We can see that currently there are 165 million shares outstanding, more or less, or actually almost 166 million shares outstanding. So that's the number that I plucked over here in the Excel sheet. And if we scroll down a little bit to the cash and cash equivalent, we can see that they have almost $630 million in cash on their balance sheet. So then the Excel sheet is already going to calculate the market cap and the enterprise value for you. Basically, by taking that share price of $13.49, multiplying it by the amount of outstanding shares right now, and that is going to give you a market cap of $2.2 billion. And then you can arrive at an enterprise value by taking that market cap and subtracting the amount of net cash they are going to have on their balance sheet, or they already have on their balance sheet rather, and that is, of course, 630 million more or less. So if you take 2.2 billion minus this number net, net cash, then you arrive at an enterprise value of $1.6 billion. So based on a share price of $13.49, Lordstown, the company, is currently worth about $1.6 billion. But is that actually a fair price per share? Well, let's check it out because we are going to take a look at the fair valuation of this company according to the company themselves. So this is not a subjective opinion from me, but it's just the opinion of the company and the SPAC themselves. So keep that in mind, okay? So let's first of all take a look at the numbers we need. We need two numbers for this calculation. First, we're going to take a look at what the EBITDA of a certain year in the future is. And for this video, we're going to be taking a look at the year 2024. So here in the investor presentation, we can already see that they project to have about $600 million in EBITDA in 2024. And of course, I say expect because expect is a very important word here. The thing is, they don't really have a proven track record yet. And of course, the short seller report also indicates the exact same thing. So in 2020, they didn't have any revenue. In 2021, so this year, they expect to have 2.2 thousand units sold. And that is going to bring in, according to them, $118 million in revenue. But yeah, of course, keep in mind that these are all projections. We don't know for sure if this is going to happen, but we are going to go with these numbers for now because, yeah, we just don't have any other numbers to go with. So again, $600 million in EBITDA in 2024. That's the first number we need. And that's also the number you can plug in over here in your Excel sheet, $600 million. Now, the next thing we're going to need is a fair multiple for this company to apply that to that EBITDA of 2024. And for that, we're going to be taking a look at the 
earned multiples of other similar companies out there and especially these five companies on the right hand side so tesla packer uh, cummins uh, navistar and allison transmission as we can see the multiples range between 8.2 and 44.5x tesla of course a deserving kind of a higher multiple compared to the other traditional oems and we can see that in general these four oems trade within a range of 8.2x to 11.8x okay so then we're actually going to go to another page over here in the investor presentation because lordstown motors say okay so we have that range of like 8 to, uh, to 11x more or less. So we are going to apply more or less the same range of multiples to our own EBITDA to arrive at a fair enterprise valuation. Now, let's take a look because they are going to go with a range of 8 to 10x. So 8x on the low end, 10x on the high end. And those are the numbers you can plug over here in your Excel sheet. Now, the Excel sheet is going to take care of almost the rest of the trends or the calculations rather, of course. So what it's going to do is it's going to take that EBITDA of 2024, which was 600 million. And it's going to multiply that first of all by the low multiple of 8x to arrive at a low enterprise value of $4.8 billion. And again, this is in 2024, okay? And then it's also going to do the exact th same thing with the high multiple of 10x to, of course, arrive at a high enterprise value of $6 billion. Then you can also say, well, what is the midpoint valuation? Well, that is simply the average between the low valuation and the high valuation, which in this case is $5.4 billion. But that is, of course, the future enterprise valuation. We have been taking a look at the numbers of 2024, and we've applied a range of multiples based on the multiples of the traditional OEMs of 2021. So there's a discrepancy between the years, between 2024, between 2021. So what we need to do now is to discount these numbers back to the present. How do we do that? Well, for this calculation, we also need two numbers. We need two numbers. First of all, we need a, a discount rate. And that's going to be 20%, which is uh, pulled straight from the investor presentation. You can see here, they apply a discount rate of 20%. And we also need an amount of years to discount it back towards the present. Well, we started out in 2000, uh, sorry, yeah, 2024, and we are now living in almost uh, the half, half, second half of 2021. So you basically can discount it two and a half years back in time, just like they say in their investor presentation. So to do that in the sheet, in the Excel sheet, what you need to plug in over here next to the valuation year is 2023.5 <laughs> because of that half year, uh, which is also uh, needed to take into account. So if you do that, the Excel sheet is going to take care of the rest of the calculations for you. And what it's going to do, and I'm just going to manually do the exact same calculation. It's going to take, first of all, the low enterprise value of 4.8 billion. It's going to divide it by 1.2. The two here is standing for that discount rate of 20%. And it's going to do that to the power of 2.5 because of the uh, two and a half years to discount it back towards the present, okay? So that is going to give you a discounted enterprise value of a little bit more than $3 billion, just like in the uh, Excel sheet, just like in the calculator. And if everything is all right, it should also be exactly the number more or less in the investor presentation. So it's going to do exactly the same thing for the high valuation. Let's do exactly the same thing. So you have 6 billion, which is going to be divided by 1.2, and that to the power of 2.5 to arrive at a discounted enterprise value for the high end of $3.8 billion in the Excel sheet, in the calculator, and let's go to the investor presentation, also here, $3.8 billion. But that is the enterprise value. We, of course, want to know what a fair price per share is going to be. For that, first, we need to go back to a market cap, a fair market cap. How do we do that? Well, in the beginning of this video, we said that the difference between an enterprise value on the one hand and a market cap on the other hand is the amount of net cash they are going to have on their balance sheet. And we said in the beginning of this video, the amount of net cash they currently have on their balance sheet is $630 million. So we can now take these discounted enterprise valuations, we can add back the amount of net cash they have on their balance sheet 
And then you're going to arrive at these fair market caps. So for the low end, 3.7 billion, or the midpoint valuation, 4.1 billion, or the high valuation, 4.4 billion, more or less. And then the only thing you need to do is to take those market caps, divide them by the amount of outstanding shares, which we said was 166 million shares outstanding. And then you're going to arrive at these fair prices per share. So for the low end, $22.13, for the midpoint valuation, $24.42, and for the high valuation, $26.71. So based on these calculations, that would mean that Lordstown Motors is currently actually undervalued. Of course, don't trust me, verify me, always check what I'm doing, always check if the calculations are correct. And also keep in mind, we have been taking a look at assumptions. So we've taken a look at a projected EBITDA in 2024. We've taken a look at a certain range of multiples. If you change one of these numbers, then the entire calculation is going to change and your fair price per share is going to change as well. And also for this company, keep in mind the Hindenburg short seller reports that could of course also have an impact on the share price. So let me know in the comments, what do you think is a fair range of multiples for this company. And with that being said, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.